my name is Hannah and this is my beauty budget. Hey y'all, welcome to the final installment in my massive rapid end of year shotgun fire declutter. I'm really excited because I just finished decluttering my makeup collection to filth. I decluttered it like a mad woman and I'm very happy with the results, but my skincare is sitting here on the other side of my vanity plaguing me. It's actually not just skincare, it's also hair care. There's too much hair care here, there's too much skincare, there's stuff that I think I'm ready to let go of instead of trying to continue to pan it. So I'm just gonna go right ahead and, and actually just bring it all over here and deal with it right here in front of you. I realized that for the last couple of videos, there's been no transition into the meat. The whole video has been meat, but let's do it for this video. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Y'all, this is crazy town. It's crazy town, but I'm I'm going to do it. I have the tools, I have the wherewithal, I have the grit, I have the determination, I have the camera on. I'm wearing my Piero sweater for inspiration because I guess I want my skincare collection to be so curated that it makes me feel as good as this makes me feel. What should we start with? I, I think we should just start with hair care because the bottles are so big and they're just like looming up into my face right now. Here's the thing. Th these are products that I, I'll use up. It's just, I don't need them all open at the same time. I don't need to be using them all at the same time. So I'm going to see if there are any that I can put in my backup drawer. But this just made it through a recent declutter. This is the Pravana Polish and Reunite, Reunite Split End Mender. And now that I see it like together with all my other stuff, it's like, I don't need it. I also don't need the Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil Spray. These are both products that are for people who like smooth hair, like smooth, silky locks. And I don't, I like to look like I'm wearing a bad wig and I just fell down the stairs and into the ocean. So these can go, these can be given away. Here are three texture sprays and two texture powders. <laughs> And I don't need all of them sitting on my vanity. I like all of them. They've all made it through Reckonings and I've been using them a lot. Let's see which one is almost done. The Moroccan Oil Dry Texture Spray is maybe half finished. The Surge Salon one is more than half finished. So is that right? Yeah, so I'm gonna keep the Surge Salon one on my vanity. That's the one I'm gonna be using right now. I guess I'll, I'll keep it here. I'll put it back in a little bit. But I'm gonna put Moroccan Oil Dry Texture and IGK Beach Club in the backups box. And when I'm finished with the one I'm using, I'll pull one of these out. That's how it's gonna be going forward, Hannah Louise Poston. I actually do feel like these hair powders provide a little bit of a different service because this one, the Marc Antony one, is very sticky. And this one's more like a cross between a powder and a dry shampoo. So I'm gonna keep both of them on the vanity for now. And then here is my one current dry shampoo. It's the Amica Perk Up. So that's it, we're down to four. This is the Better Not Younger Hair Thickener. It's something that you spray in your hair after you wash it. Let's see if there's room for it at the end because they do usually do that kind of thing right here. Okay, we did it, we did hair. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna move stuff back to this spot over there, group by group as I finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the hair product back over there. Okay, I moved them over there, but I actually put Better Not Younger, the one that I use like once a week after washing, into the drawer because there's room in the drawer and that makes sense because it's stored away. It doesn't need to be there for easy access because I'll know where it is when I need it. So I've got those four products on the top of the vanity. Feeling good. Let's move on to another category. Okay, the one I've been dying to tackle is like heavy night moisturizers. These aren't actually all heavy night moisturizers, but these are all of my kind of cream moisturizers and all of them were pretty much incorporated in my collection in the hopes that they would serve in that role. I actually don't really use moisturizers in the daytime. I use my sunscreen, I use oils, and I use like a hefty primer. I, I just don't put like a cream moisturizer and then put my sunscreen on top. So a light daytime moisturizer like this one from Verify, even though this is a really nice product and it does provide a lot of protection, I'm just not making use out of it and I know that I can find someone to take this off my hands who will really love it because a lot of people do use moisturizer in the daytime. So I'm gonna give that away. 
Then this one is almost done. Like I, I almost managed to make it. It's like pretty much panned. Can you hear me like spitting at you? It's pretty much panned. It's the Pretty Pop Probiotic Power Whipped Cream from Saturday Skin. I didn't love it, but I made my way through it. I did use it during the day because it did have this nice sheen to it. It was weird and a little bit chunky. I am just going to go ahead and say it's done. I'm going to call it. I'm going to put it in my empties actually. So the ones that I am enjoying using are the Derma E Skin Restore and the Iopi Plant Stem Cell. They're both very heavy, really thick. And when I wake up in the morning after putting these on, my skin is really, really happy. I have an announcement though. I am no longer, I think, going to really be gravitating towards night creams and jars. I just don't like it, especially now that I'm keeping my nails kind of like a little bit long. I don't like reaching into a jar with my long fingernails. I don't like reaching into a jar over and over. I am going to be trying to find exclusively heavy night creams that are in tube packaging like this one. So I'm going to use these up, but then I'm really going to try to find a source. Maybe I'll buy the cactus cream again or something. I'm really going to try to find a source that has a different kind of packaging. For now though, these, I'm going to use them up. Both of them are more than half gone. I've really been digging into them. And these two were done. So the Origins Ginseng Gel Boost, again, it's like almost done. Look at that. I did a really, really good job, but I really had to force myself to use this because it's too lightweight for me. I'm going to put that in my empties and I'll talk about it next year. And then the Creme de la Creme Moisturizing Face Cream from Fleur and B, same thing. I did a really good job piling it on, but I just, I'm not going to use it for the three or four more times that it would take to use it up because I, I never really liked it. This one is a little bit of a tough call, the Madacassoside Sleeping Mask. It's just too lightweight for me. I don't really like sleeping in it, and it's, it's tough. I, I feel like I could use it up. I mean, I'm going to keep it. At, let's see how we're doing at the end. This is the kind of thing that if it's still ridiculous at the end, I'll go ahead and give this away to someone because I haven't used very much of it. But if I end up with a pretty clear situation at the end of this, like a pretty, uh, a pretty streamlined situation, I could make my way through the rest of this. What I'll do is I'll put a layer on and then I'll put one of those thicker ones on top of it. But I've been loving this retinol cream so much, and it's like a more lightweight cream. Almost every night I'm putting on this one as my lighter weight cream and then layering a thicker one on top. So it's like, why would I put this one and then the metacassoside? And then it, it just doesn't, it's not going to fit as elegantly into my routine as I like things to fit. Um, but we'll see. It's not quite on the chopping block yet. So I just put that retinol cream over there. I'm definitely keeping it. it it's also a cream though, so I wanted to take care of it in that group. Let's tackle oils. I, I'm going to be hard pressed to get rid of any oils. Oh no, there's one that I can let go of. So this is the Bell and Beast Organics Antioxidant Face Oil. It has dried flowers in it and it smells a little bit like geranium. That geranium oil smell always makes me feel like something is rotten, even though I know that it's not. It doesn't necessarily mean it is. It just makes me feel that way. And that combined with the dead flowers in this makes me reluctant to reach for this. So I'm going to declutter that oil. But I think that that might be the only one. Oh, this. So this is a retinol treatment oil from Jordan Samuel, the Etoile one. I used this for a couple of months at the beginning of the year, and I think it was causing some clogged pores, some texture for me. I now have that retinol cream, which I really, really love. So I'm going to declutter this one. I'm definitely not ever going to go back to this bottle. So that's another oil gone. That's great. And that is it. I have seven face oils, seven all-purpose face oils here before me. I'm going to be keeping all of them. I go through oil like fish goes through water. I'm confident that I will make good use of them. I'm confident that I will use them up. So yeah, I'm keeping all seven of these. Oh, but you know what I'm going to do? When I was putting all of these seven oils over there, I would forgotten about my backups box. This is the exact situation for which I decided to have a backups box. So I'm going to put these uh, four oils, which are all almost full, into the backups box, and I'm going to keep my two oils that are almost finished, not almost finished, but, but about halfway finished. One is almost finished, one's halfway finished. I'm gonna keep those two bottles on my vanity and I'm going to focus on using them up. And then there's a third one I'm going to keep on my vanity, which is the Le Prunier oil. That's my current favorite face oil. Oh, there's one I forgot about, this one. <laughs> so I have eight. <laughs> I have eight, but I'm keeping them all. But I'm gonna put these five in the backups box. And then when I start using up, almost all of those, maybe when I've used them all up, except one, I'll pull one or two out of the backups box. The point of the backups box is so that my actual space isn't clogged and I'm keeping the things that I know I want to use on the back burner. So this is great. I, I'm so smart. I'm so glad I decided to have a backups box. Okay, continuing to move along. We didn't deal with all of the hair stuff. I forgot that this Lila B. Aglow face mist is actually 
a hair product. It's like a, a Beach Waves salt spray type thing. So I'm going to pop that on the vanity because I, I really love this. It's my favorite texturizer right now. And then I've got these two hair serums, like hair oil serums. I, I really have been making pretty good use of both of them. They're both almost done, but I don't need both of them in rotation at the same time. So I'm, I'm going to put the one from Hair La Vie in the backups box, and I'm going to put this one on my vanity. All right, I need to have a serious talk with myself about serums. Give me a minute. This is one for which I'm really going to need like a minute. I'm talking about hydrating treatment serums, not acid treatments, not anything exfoliating. I'll deal with those in a second, but just like, you know, nourishing serums. Oh, this is a spray, the Timeless Hyaluronic Acid Spray. I just don't really use toner sprays. I haven't been using it very much. I'm going to give that away. Gosh, I'm looking at all my serums and I also decided to include like first treatment essences and hydrating essences and stuff because it's kind of all the same to me. I've sort of become less enthusiastic about this step of my skincare routine. I tend to do one little thing first, which it can be like a first treatment essence or I don't know, a nice serum, and then immediately go into the oils. I, I like them all, but I just don't feel like I need this many. So the COSRX Galactomyces one, if uh, there's like maybe two uses left. Again with this, I'm just going to call it because I'm, I'm not, I, it's been down to its last two uses for a really long time and I haven't finished it up. So I'm just going to put this straight into my empties. This Lauren just gave me, it's the Amore Pacific Vintage Single Extract Essence. And I've wanted to try this for a really long time. I haven't liked anything, honestly, that, that I've tried from Amore Pacific, but I'm willing to give them another chance with this essence because it was so highly recommended by Gothamista. The bottle's also really beautiful. So I'm going to hang on to that as like a, a really an actual first treatment toner. And I'm going to say that let's just stick with that, although I don't think I have anything else that's trying to vie for that role. This Nani light oil serum that Yes Style sent to me, I, it's fine. Like it's a fine hydrating serum. I just, I'm not passionate about it and I have so much. I think this is one that can go just for the sake of clearing space. This is a product I love, the Makeup Bra Sauce. I will use that up. I really like the hyaluronic acid from Timeless, the um, hyaluronic acid serum. I'll go ahead and use this up, but I don't like having a standalone hyaluronic acid serum. I'm keeping this one because it's very cosmetically elegant and I know that I can make myself use it. But when I use this up, I'm not going to get like another standalone hyaluronic acid just serum by itself. There's hyaluronic acid in so many other mixed products. I just don't feel like I need it in a standalone serum. I have been given some in PR and I'm giving them all away to my family over the holidays. This is a category. I really like this Nasific Fresh Herb Origin Serum. Like you can see, I've had it not for that long, just since BeautyCon and I'm almost halfway through it. And then I also have this Amore Pacific version. It's like a much more expensive version of kind of the same thing. I didn't like this quite as much when I first got it, but I feel like loving this is, is teaching me to love this kind of product. So I'm going to go ahead and hang on to both of these. I like to use this oil serum sort of like um, combination product as a way of bridging my first treatment essence with my oils. So I think I'll be able to use those guys up. And then to my shame, I actually kept this 111 Skin Booster Serum thing because I had put it in my reckoning and said, I was like, I don't know what it is. I don't really know anything about it. It's probably nice, but I have so many serums, blah, blah, blah. Then when I went to link it in the description box when I was posting that video, I found out that it costs $160. It's a $160 serum, and that caused me to pull it back out of my giveaway box and start trying it for myself. I don't know what to tell you. I, should I be ashamed of that? I don't, I don't know. I was just like, what? I read all the ingredients. I can't really tell what it's supposed to do, but I just, I want to give it a try. It's also annoyingly marketed as like an after workout or an after sports serum. But here's the thing. <laughs> I think that the allure, the mystique of the fact that it retails for so much money, might be the thing that causes me to actually use it. And I think that my lukewarm attention to serums, I would like to get a little more excited about serums and maybe this one will be like the thing that gets me to do that. So I'm gonna hang on to this. And actually now we're down to a reasonable number. So I have 
this first treatment essence and this, which is like a hydrating first treatment essence, I'll definitely be able to use those guys. I have these two oil serums, which are kind of the same category. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'll put the Amore Pacific one in the backups box. And that way, after I finish the one from Nacific, I can switch to that one. And then for serum -y serums, all I have are these hyaluronic, the hyaluronic acid one and the $160 one. So that's good. That's five products. That's reasonable. That For me, that's something that I can handle, especially compared to how it has been. Eye creams. I only have two out here. This is the one that I've been using on a daily basis. Serene gave this to me. I'm sure it's almost done because I've had it for a while. I also like this one from Verify, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the backups box. I don't need two out here at once. Ew. You know what I can get rid of? This Kendall Jenner moon teeth whitening pen. I never, I tried to use it like once or twice after it made it through the reckoning and it did not go well. It's going straight into the trash. This is a little tiny sample of the Fable Soap Company Copiaba and Tamanu balancing oil. I love Tamanu oil, but I, I think I used this once and it kind of broke me out and I just don't need to be keeping like a little sample of an oil. All right, it's starting to be like manageable. I'm really, I'm really starting to feel like okay about this. I feel like it's going to be okay. So let's talk about acids because acid treatments, that's something that I really love. And I actually do like rotating among them. So I'm looking at my acid treatments here. This is one that can go. The one from The Ordinary, it's the lactic acid 10% and hyaluronic acid. I have some bottles of Good Genes. I have a little bit of Good Genes and I feel like if I need a heavy duty lactic acid treatment, I'm gonna go for the Good Genes. I'm always rotating among my other acid treatments. I'm always reaching for my other acid treatments and I never ever reach for this one. So I'm gonna declutter that. And then of the others, I feel like maybe the Verify Oh, I actually really like them all. So I have two things of Good Jeans right here. There's one full-size bottle. Both of these were given to me as gifts. And then there's one little bottle. I'm going to put the little bottle in my backup drawer, and then I'll also remember it when it's time to travel if I ever want to take it with me. But I'm going to keep working on this full-size bottle. And you know, this one from Verify, I really love. It's like a dupe for Good Jeans. It's the Power Trip Serum. I am going to keep this, but I'm going to also put it in the backups box because I just know that I haven't been reaching for it as much. I've been rotating among my Lotion P50, the Good Molecules Overnight Exfoliating Treatment, the Caudalie Vino Pure. I've been rotating among these three, really. And so I'm going to keep doing that until I use one or two of them up, and then I will fish this one out of the backups box. I'm also going to work on finishing up this azelaic acid suspension. It's almost empty. I feel like there's maybe one use left in here, if that. So that is about to be used up. And then good jeans I use like maybe once a week, once every two weeks as a sleeping facial. So I'm down to my three that are in rotation and my two overnight facials. That's fine. Let's talk about sunscreen. I've got a full-size bottle and a travel bottle of Aaron's Faces. And I am going to keep them both, but I think I might put the, the little one, the travel-sized one, in the backups box because it's like, why do I need it? Why do I need both of them out, right? Like I can use this one when I'm traveling. And then I've actually been using this one from Kula sometimes as well. I've been like switching off between them. This was a party favor at the influencer party I went to. It's the Mineral Sun Silk Cream. I like it. It's cosmetically elegant. It's fine for use and I'm happy to use up this bottle but it's so much more expensive per ounce than the Erin's Faces one, and it also doesn't have those skincare benefits. So I still prefer Erin's Faces. It's still my favorite one, but I'm going to keep using both of these. I'm going to keep like switching off between them, so I'm going to keep them both on my vanity for now. But this, the Sun Tribe Organic Day Cream SPF 20, it's just so weird, and it's getting like ever weirder and nastier. The, the longer I keep it, the more kind of separated and oily it gets. It just didn't hold up well to being shipped internationally, and I don't feel like I need to keep hanging on to it and keep trying to get through it. These are two lip treatments. This is a lip exfoliator that's like pretty harsh. It's from Hen, and it's got kind of sharp crystals in it. But I've, I've been having success lately with remembering to exfoliate my lips in the shower. So I'm going to put this into my shower. And then this is the Herbivore Lip Balm. I've used a ton of this. I've, I've used like maybe three quarters of it. There's just a little bit left around the edges. I've been keeping this on my vanity, and that's what helps me remember to use it. It's a great lip balm. I don't really love lip products in pots. Again, I've really moved away from that. So after I use this up, I'll be looking to either continue with the big chapsticky one I have or replace it with a chapsticky one once I use that one up. I don't think I'm going to be getting something like this again. But for the time being, I do believe I can use this up entirely. So I'm going to hang on to it. This is the Moonshot Moonbright Cream. It actually belongs with my complexion products. I'm going to put it 
in there. This is uh, the Cyberderm Retinol. I was using this for a long time and it was actually good. It's a good product. And when my face, my skin's balance got out of whack a while back, I had like over exfoliated. I scaled back on a bunch of my harsher products and I stopped using this. And I was just really gentle with my skin for a long time. And then I never reincorporated it and it got replaced by the one from Body Mary. I think I made pretty good use out of this. I think I used up like most of it and it's probably really down to its last little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it with this. I'm gonna pass it on because I'm so devoted to the one from Body Mary. I would like to keep using that one and then repurchasing that one. This is a nice product, but it's not something that I would buy myself because it's too expensive. I'm going to hang on to this Pixie eye mask thing. I had another thing of eye masks that were thicker and I didn't like them as much. I can't even, they were like cocoa, gold or something like that. It was They were a K-Beauty product. I like these ones way, 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 way better. These Pixie eye masks definitely have my stamp of approval. So I'm going to make these my eye masks. I think I'm giving that jar away to someone for Christmas. I think it's already in a giveaway bag. I already just like grabbed it from my skincare and put it in somebody's giveaway bag. So these are the ones that I'm, I'm going to stick with. I, I use them a lot actually. Eye drops, crucial. Keep them on my vanity. We're getting down to it. This is my my cellar water, and it's not the Yes to Carrots one. I've actually been refilling this with some of my cellar water that I keep in my backups box, but I am gonna keep this on my vanity. I use my my cellar water a lot. And you know, I think I might start storing my face masks. I, what I do is I have them out here, and then sometimes there's one or two in my backup box. Mostly they're just out here so that I can see them. I might see if there's room for them in the drawer because then it wouldn't be so busy on top of my vanity. Yay, okay, so I just tucked those into the back of my drawer but on the very edge so they're easily accessible. I don't think I'll forget to reach for them because I love sheet masks and it'll be fun to just pull them out and pick one every time I want to sheet mask. I don't need them taking up so much space and so much just air time and attention on top of my vanity. So this is pretty much empty now. It's just got my jade roller, which I never use. This can go. I just never use my, I never use a jade roller. Yeah. I've got my fan that I use. I've got these two kinds of lash and, and um, brow enhancing serum, and I have been using them both kind of interchangeably, the Babe Lash one and the Cell one. So I'm going to keep them here, keep using them, and then I do use Neosporin cosmetically. I mean, it's not cosmetic, but I use it on my face, not just on wounds, but if I get like an open blemish, I use Neosporin. So I'm going to keep it on the top of my vanity too. Is that everything? Oh my gosh. Wow, it's there's so much less of it, but let, let me put it all back and, and put it all into its place and then we'll, we'll see how I really actually did. Y'all, I'm absolutely ecstatic. I just got back from first cleaning that acrylic container thing, which is very difficult to clean. Those things are tough to clean and they kind of do get dirty, especially with skincare, and mine's gotten all cracked, just in case you were thinking about buying something like that. It's something that's good to know. The best thing might have been to put it through the dishwasher, but ain't nobody got time for that right now. So everything fit, except for the eye gel patches and the two big jars of face cream. So I have even more of a reason now to not want big hulking jars of face cream like these because the Madacaso side sleeping cream fit right in. Like it was easy to incorporate it into the it incorporate it into the acrylic container, which you'll see when I show you the picture. These are having to sit separately on top of my vanity. So it'll be nice when these are done and when that one's done and when I can buy one that just fits into the acrylic container along with everything else. And then the Pixie eye masks, that thing was too big to fit in the acrylic container but everything else fits. It all fits snugly and it just looks so much more normal and approachable. It's still a lot of skincare, but you know, I'm a, I'm a lot of face. It's a lot of skincare, but it's, it's appropriate for me. It's how I want my vanity to look. It's how I want my life to be. And it's nice to know that I can kind of like go through these things one by one or two by two and then replace them, some of them with backups from the backup box. It just feels a lot calmer and more organized and it feels like I have more space to breathe and there actually is literally more space on my vanity. So I will now insert the full before picture and then the after picture of the full thing, the entire space, my whole countertop of my vanity and my drawer 
everything has been cleared out and decluttered. I've gotten rid of 45 at least makeup products, as I said in the last video, and then one, two, three, at least 10 of the skincare items that were sitting on top of my vanity are being given away, ones that still have use left in them. There are at least four or five I remember popping into my empties because there was only a smidgen left and I was never going to get through it. And then some have been removed to my backup drawer. So I feel like I've probably taken at least 20, if not 25 things out of that space. And that's definitely what it looks like. It, it looks shockingly reduced, like reduced by at least half. And all of the hair care too. So... Yay! That was my declutter. That was my massive declutter. I'm so excited to be starting 2020 with just less stuff in my face. And I'm hoping that I can maintain that state of things as I move forward through the year. I'll be talking more about that on January 1st when I reveal my project. I just heard Joe come in, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Thank you so, so much for watching this. It's just so lovely to have you here. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself right now so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.